it was totally and utterly morally bankrupt. I, I just don't know what Jacob gets off on. I mean, if, if he were in Australia representing uh, Australians, Australian farmers would be asking for him to be deported. I mean, you know, he's here representing, he's in a very rural constituency in Somerset. Why would you want something to come here that was banned, literally made illegal nearly 30 years ago? So we banned uh, hormone growth promoters and rightly so back then. No farmer wants to bring them back here. Why would he want to undermine our production. Uh, President of the National Farmers Union, Minette Bass is here. Minette, how are you? I'm good. How's your conference been? Do you feel like the, I mean, traditionally the Tories would have a good relationship with farmers. Is that still the case? Well, we have a, a, a stand at every party um, conference every every year. So we were at the Lib Dems, we're here, and then we're heading off to, to Liverpool. So what is really important for the NFU is that we, we are apolitical and that we have great relationships with everyone, because particularly in the run up to an election, um, you, who knows what's going to happen. So, um, you know, how people might vote is, is slightly immaterial. You know, I will be having the same conversation with Ed Davey, with Sir Keir Starmer, as I will with Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister. And what are you saying to Rishi Sunak? The frustration I have at the moment is actually the commitments that, that Rishi Sunak made on the campaign trail with Liz Trust to food production were really important. Um, some of them have happened, but not all of them. So we don't have the self-sufficiency target that he talked about, the annual reporting, the statutory underpinning. That's probably the single most important thing that needs to happen because at the moment food is becoming the sort of poor relation to green energy and, and many other things, environmental commitments. So I, I'm slightly frustrated that the commitments he made are still getting pushed back on. Uh, uh, just explain what that is. The food, you want it written into law, the percentage of food that we would produce here? Well, look, we're an island nation with nearly 70 million people. A lot of people will remember the rationing of eggs, the rationing of salads this year. We need a long-term commitment to food production. And to a certain extent, it's what Kate was saying just now. People want stability and a long-term view and plan. Now, I think that's been challenging because three different prime ministers in 12 months, they all had completely different approaches. Yeah. But actually, what he laid out, uh, I think, was, was ahead of everybody else. I'd just like to see it happen. Um, this is your last conference as NFU president before you stand down. Do you think that farming is in a good state? Do you hand it over to the to the next president in a in a better state? I mean, how have the last? I mean, Brexit, war in Ukraine, the weather, food prices. How how is that all affecting your your members? It's been the most extraordinarily challenging six years, and those three things that you talked about. Uh, I think. I worry right now about those that are closest to the marketplace. That's people who are producing our vegetables, our salads, um, eggs, poultry, meat, dairy. All those price points are really congested with uh, the primary producer getting uh, really less than 1% profit if they're lucky. Many have been producing uh, l below the cost of production. And, and whatever business you are running, if you are not getting a return for it, let alone not making any profit, you're not going to keep doing it. So we are seeing contraction in the, all of those sectors. You, the Grocery Code Adjudicator, their report, you know, uh, retailers declaring warfare on suppliers was the headline. And I think on the back of COVID, on the back of Ukraine, you've got all this cost inflation still. They probably only got 60% of the cost inflation back to the farm gate. And now prices are still not coming down very much for consumers, but they're trying to drive deflation into the primary producer. So, that, you know, when Rishi Sunak talks about, you know, inflation being the harshest tax of all, we're still seeing this huge cost with primary production. And that's a big issue. And retailers, of course, we live with the retail price war. It's very tough out there. I wonder what you make of uh, Tui's coffee, the environment secretary, your sort of champion around the cabinet table. This is what she was uh, saying in her big speech in the party conference stage uh, yesterday.
I mean, apart from the fact she was, it was dangerously close to Liz Truss's cheese speech towards the end there. Do you think she's focusing on the right priorities? We had um, Claire Coutinho, the energy secretary yesterday, claiming that the Labour Party wants to tax meat. This just isn't a thing. Are they trying to turn meat into a culture war? It, it, it's it's sort of fairly extraordinary at the moment because the net zero uh, announcement, you know, was all about stepping back from a meat tax. Well, I hadn't heard the Conservatives ever talking about a meat tax. I haven't heard Labour talking about a meat tax. So as far as I know, it isn't policy for anyone. And yet it seems to have become <laughs> politicised. So it's, it's a bit odd. Um, and i sort of missing the point, really. I mean, you know, we, we grow grass in this country. We're one of few countries that has a maritime climate. We should be producing much more of, of what we're good at. And if we're not consuming it here, we should be exporting it to other parts of the world and, and adding value uh, to, to what we do and, and what we export. So that would be my thoughts. You're, you're not convinced this meat tax thing is a, is a new uh, battleground. Let me just ask you finally, Jacob Rees-Mogg was at an event yesterday, says, I want hormone-injected beef from Australia. I've eaten beef in Australia. It was absolute delicious, absolutely delicious. There's nothing wrong with it, and they should be allowed to export it here because we want lower costs. What do you make of that? Well, I actually retweeted it and said it was totally and utterly morally bankrupt. I, I just don't know what Jacob gets off on. I mean, if, if he were in Australia representing uh, Australians, Australian farmers would be asking for him to be deported. I mean, you know, he's here representing, he's in a very rural constituency in Somerset. Why would you want something to come here that was banned, literally made illegal nearly 30 years ago? So we banned uh, hormone growth promoters and rightly so back then. No farmer wants to bring them back here. Why would he want to undermine our production and and ultimately you know a price point it might be slightly cheaper but why would you want to do that so this for me has been the fundamental point all the way along that we must have a fair approach to trade the british people want to have imports that are produced to the same standard as we have here and i was delighted that rishi sunak said in writing he put it in writing, not now, not ever, with hormone-treated beef and chlorine-washed chicken. And now, it's great to have the Conservatives in that position. Why Jacob has to go and have <laughs> sound bites that just want to attract attention, presumably, to him, I really don't know. And you just hope that Rishi Sudak sticks to those pledges, right, even while he's dropping all the others? I'm Look, <laughs> the, he has taken a different approach to trade. Liz Truss would have opened negotiations with the Trans-Pacific deal at 100,000 tonnes on beef. The deal that we've negotiated is 13,000 tonnes. So between Kemi Badenoch and Rishi Sunak, totally different approach. And so they've done that. They've stood behind it. Now they keep, need to keep on, and I should be watching them like hawks. You know, they need to keep that in place. But it's a lot, lot better oh, and more constructive than it was. Well, Minette, it's lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. If you're sort of annual your visits during Biotech Conference season, so it's great to see you. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having best me. Best of luck with the future as well. Minette Batterstead, the NFU uh, president, joining us live from the Conservative Party Conference.